Okay, welcome to Conversation Transfer. Special type of deal you put together here. Yes, today is special. This is not episode 11 like you typically think. Um, We were running behind on episodes. As in, we couldn't produce them fast enough. We were taking too many weekends off. Well, there's a lot of busy, busy work around here. Yes, and, you know, our life is not podcasting. So, um, nope. that we've got to get ahead. Even so. though if you listen to it, it sounds like it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> not. Um, but to get ahead, I, I came up with this idea about doing a mini series. A mini series? Mini series. This will be a very mini, mini series because it's not going to be very many episodes, just two. Okay. So it's just going to make it so I can. In one we can get two in, basically. Gotcha. So, well, well, let's go. This mini series. So, is... did we even have to put it together as a mini series? If you were going to go ahead and explain it like that, I couldn't. Well, it just said yes. these will be a short episode because well, we're going to split it into no, two. It, it's going to be a mini series because they'll be all based around the same topic. I got gotcha. you. So, it's a mini series. It's not two different separate episodes about separate, completely different Earth and you know a random Joe. It's it's all about this one topic. You ready for the title? Sure. It, Hit me. You have joined the mini series, A Corporate Scandal, The Modern Consumer, and More About Your Local Grocery Store. This is episode one. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. So this will be a two-part series. Uh, we're going to have episode one and two. Like I said, not a very big mini series. But no. It's a very mini mini series. It's mini. It's, yes, it is. Mini. So uh, here we go. Yes. Um, as you can tell from the title, we're going to be talking about shopping. Shopping. Consumer. Awesome. Okay. So Hit me. Kind of ties in with our middle class one because that's a very um, day-to-day thing for everybody. Uh, we're not living in the woods anymore. Not hunter-gatherers. We're not shooting our game. Food comes from the store. Food's coming from the store, which is very historically, this, that's a new thing. It's only happened in the last century. Yep. Um, so, here we go. I took an Ames history course, History 122, um, last year that covered a little bit about – it's um, it's a, an American history course from Reconstruction to today. And um, it covered a little about this uh, consumer. The, this episode one will be all about the consumer and its progression. Right, because if you go back to a uh, hundred years, let's say nineteen twenties. Well, how I have, it's gonna be right, way I have a question. Yeah, how did the term or where did the name consumer come from? Because when I first heard it, I was probably your age, and I thought it was such a negative con. It, had, it just had a negative feel about it. You see, as a neg- I have no idea. I've never thought of it as a negative word. Consumer is actually, in my opinion, a good word because it means it, it relates to the middle to me. It relates to a middle class, a, uh, a society based on con- a product and a consumer. What first came to mind for me when yeah. I heard that people who shopped were considered consumers? The first thing that came to mind for me was like the ants consuming all the natural resources around their ant mound. Huh. Yeah. Well, yes, because we are consuming natural resources, but yeah, I mean that co- that's that just goes, how that goes that's... into a new thing like sustainability. We need to become more sustainable, which is a whole another. That's why I asked. I said, episode. "Where did that word come from, consumer?" Because well, for me, it was so. I typed it in. I'm I'm consuming the earth. That's yep. gross. And I don't want to. The Oxford know. English Dictionary tells us consumer comes from the Latin consumer, which is a Latin word. It's, all words are Latin based, and this is to destroy, oh, Jesus. wear away, to kill, annul, extinguish, wear down, exhaust, to eat, to devour, to take, uh, use up, expel, merge, spend, etc. It et seemed to me that consumer it's, is a negative. It's, term. Yeah, I can see where you're saying the negative because yeah. it is consuming. Yes, um, but today it's used. In the way that we're wanting it is consuming is buying goods. Yes. You consuming are consuming the, the natural resources yep. that those goods came from. Yep. Yep. So 
the rise of the consumer. Because everybody's consumers now. Sure. And some people are practitioners. Just depends what business are you in. So we're going to be doing grocery stores. Grocery stores. The most where you go and buy your needs, your food, and your wants sometime. Um, so like I said, I took this history course and it goes way back into the reconstruction. We won't go back that far because all we really need to know is consumers started around in the early 1900s to 1920s in what's known as the progressive era. Okay. The progressive era um, was a very, well, progressive. It was a very progressive era. <laughs> That's why it's called the progressive era. It was, we need to stop having child workforce. We need to stop having these gross, disgusting meat plants. The book, The Jungle, ever heard of that? Upton Sinclair. Yes, came out during the progressive era. Um, required required reading in, in school for me. Yes, required reading for me as well, and probably a lot of other people. Yep, probably a um, lot. But this idea of um, the consumer comes out during this progressive era when people are saying, no, we're not going to um, have these old traditional ways of life during the industrial age because you know a lot of people were getting screwed over and living in these slums and stuff because they were working for dirt cheap poor um, so this is where the consumer kind of starts to take place however it doesn't really um, go anywhere because during the progressive era even though a lot of these changes were fought for they were not made what are the changes for like factories um, bad work like you wouldn't work weekends you wouldn't work uh, 15, 16 hours a day. That's where the eight These hour were, This was an era before in. corporates, corporations. Correct? No, it is an era during corporations. Corpora when did the so corporations in become? Industry. This is not. This has nothing to do with grocery shopping. This has to do with steel manufacturers, the Ford company with their automotives, the logging company. To those were private. Timber. Those are private owned, but that's not grocery stores. This isn't. The consumer comes around because we're starting to say no to some of these things. We, we want a shorter work week. We want some off time. We want better pay. I'm getting confused. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. The yes. consumer is a person that goes out and buys things. You're yes. kind of describing the worker. The I'm talking worker the worker, is... and the worker makes the consumer. Here's why. Because during the progressive era when we were finding these things, it did not happen. But after the progressive era, at the end when these changes were being made, you had more time to go do stuff. And what do people like doing? Like today, just think, oh, I've got um, a day, extra day off. What What am I going to go do? Uh, fish? <laughs> no. What? Shop. Oh, shopping. Okay. Shop. Sure. You're going to go shop, well, right? Well, yeah, I guess to, but we've integrated shopping into a daily well, that's ritual because, in the yeah, United States. Yeah, you're talking about, but this is when it was not. Right. This is when so, fend for yourself, you're living in a slum, you're having 16-hour work days, you're not, you don't have weekends off, life sucks. Oh, and by the way, if you die, nobody gives a crap. You're not getting um, paid for injuries, you're not getting paid, you know. If you can't show up to work, you're just replaced by somebody else. Yep, that's we're there right now, but well, not as extreme. Not as this was very extreme. Uh, give us another few years <laughs> if nobody pays attention. Well, I know, but the shopping comes around because you're fighting for this stuff, right? Uh, the progressive era is fighting for these ideologies, and now they people have more time. So. Though there's not a lot of consumerism in the progressive era, this is where it cons it's considered to like really have that head start towards the modern consumer. Um, after the progressive era, there's obviously World War I and World War II, which are considered eras of their own, right? So this is where people have just fought for these things in the progressive era, and they're going to start buying stuff. They're going to start consuming. Right? So what, what it looked like back then is you're going to walk down your city street and you're going to see all these different grocery stores by all these different people, all locally owned. They only have one store. There's not a chain. There's nothing. It's just one store. Here's their groceries and they typically get those 
um, those goods they have to sell from like a connection they have. Like right. I yeah, have a farmer the, the cousin that's street out. Street markets of the yep. old world. Sort of the, the street market. Modern exactly. American version of that. Yes, yes, exactly. So like I have a cousin that owns a farm with a bunch of tomatoes on it. So I'm selling tomatoes because I'm able to get you those tomatoes yep. from him. Yep. It's all connection based, yep. all locally owned, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So grocery stores come into effect. We now have better pay to buy goods. And still not very good pay, but better pay, right? We have and this is easier than, you know, fending for yourself. Uh, I'm not saying during the progressive era there was no grocery stores. I'm just saying there's a lot more here with these big changes being made to industrial America. More money more allows money more people yeah. to, you know, rent out storefront. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So now there's more businesses. There's what we are considering the consumer. But... When you think of consumer, here's an interesting thing that was brought up during this class. When you think consumer, who's doing the shopping? People with money. I don't know. What are you getting at? I am getting at gender-wise. Oh, well, what, what time period are you talking about? I'm Where talking about the, the early 1930s, 20s, and 40s. Okay, well, it would be, I guess, the men went off to work and the women did the homework. Yes. You know, the shopping and the cooking and the cleaning. So That's there's Mrs. Consumer. Mrs. Consumer. Which okay. was an entire topic. Oh, you couldn't just say that. You had to lead me into saying yeah. that because <laughs> you want to be the good guy. You want me to be the bad guy. Well, That's that. You know, social norms, um, if you go ask almost anybody on the street today who does the work and who typically goes to work and who typically stays home it's still the men typically go to work the women stay home i'm not saying it's progress it hasn't progressed because it definitely has to you know anybody can right uh the women can go to work and the men can stay home right it we're, we're trying to push towards it's really better for either or you know or both working Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Well, one of the things you probably—I don't know if you realize this—but the move is that was not the move. We might be starting to move back to keeping a parent at home to raise children, but for a lot of my upbringing, that was not the move. Both parents worked. Yep. Something happened in the '60s or maybe it was the early '70s where two incomes could be considered to buy a home. It used to be just one income, and when they made it so that two incomes could be considered, then women went out into the workforce and there was the ERA and they they wanted to, you know, have the same privileges that men had. I mean, I could understand. I would rather be out working than staying at home. Some people, not so much. There's, there's homebodies. Anyways, the trend was, is when I was growing up, that both parents worked and split the household chores between themselves, you know, as they fit it in. Uh, somehow when they weren't at work. But what city did you grow up in? It's not a matter of the city. This it's, was this was a national thing. It's a, yes, and we've been moving towards that, of course, uh, getting out of the so social norms. Well, that I think now we're heading back in the other direction. I think now it's seen, hell, I've preached it since day one. I'm so thankful that your mother decided to stay home and raise you. Otherwise, we would have daycare raising you. And I always preach to everybody well, I yes, ever came in contact with. One should stay home. Otherwise, what's the point of having children? I mean, maybe uh, dinks, they're fine. They go out. They don't have kids. They both can work. But if you're not, if you're um, parents of children, and this is going to sound old-fashioned or sexist or call it what you want, but it's just based on experience because I am not a sexist and a little bit old-fashioned, but really more progressive, more... Uh, forward thinking if you're going to have kids i believe that your parent one should raise you one of the parents one of them At doesn't matter which stay one home exactly or should. have part-time job or something that's not taking up you, know, you shouldn't have time. children in daycare done period yeah. that's just the way work it so that you don't have to have your kids in daycare and make the sacrifices we don't have a bunch of toys we didn't we didn't go out and get jet skis and all this crap we didn't have two people working and then spending uh a quarter of that income on daycare and then the rest of it on ourselves. No, we budgeted our lives so that your mother could raise you guys. And I think that's what people should do. That's just my thought. Well, I agree with that thought. Um, not necessarily women, but 
men to no, just exactly. a parent. I, I'm not saying yeah, a parent. That's yeah. right. That's it, two men, two women, a man and a woman. Doesn't matter which one's out there working. One of them should be with the children if you have children. Now, if you don't have children, fair game. Both of you work. Make a bunch of money. Go help the world, you know, save yeah. the frogs, whatever you got to do. <laughs> Chemicals in the water turn the freaking frogs gay. And that's what's turning you gay. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, and and I totally agree with that. But um, during this period of time, no, it was, it was it Mrs. Was consumer. Mrs. I consumer. Yep. It's man goes to work, women stay home, and raise the children, and they buy things. So, right. if you do a general search online, shopping, mm -hmm. just put in shopping. Who do you think will show up more? Women, pictures of women shopping, or pictures of men? Well, why don't you do that right this second and I tell me what been. happens? Okay, where is it? Let me see the pictures. I see no pictures. I got you. Bunch of text. Shopping. Oops. I Still a bunch shopping. of text. Where are these pictures you were talking about? Shopping. Okay, type to shopping into Google. We're going to go to images. Go to images. Okay, hit images. And it is a bunch of women. Look at that. They're buying groceries. They're buying clothing. Look, there's women with their children with them. Well, it makes sense, I guess. Whatever. Um, here's the difference. Here's the thing too. When you talk about shopping, think about this, Hayden, and you know this, and I was, you, you said it and I, I kind of remembered it because it was like, ah, see, it's a, it might be a gender thing. When men go to the store to re, uh, in not inquire, not require, but to acquire an item, it's usually a need, yes, a nut or a bolt, let's say. And they're at home, they come across a need, and they're like, I have to go to the store and acquire this item. They go to the store, they walk directly to the nut and bolt aisle, they grab the nut and bolt, they go to the cash register, and they get the hell out. <laughs> right? Yes. You said that that's what I want to do when I go shop. I heard you yes. tell that to your mom. Well, it's better to I just go get what we need and then get COVID out. This COVID stuff is almost great for shopping because it doesn't make it dilly <laughs> It doesn't. But women... And I think it is a gender thing. They kind of meander and they're going for milk. Yep. But they get in there and they're looking at the new stuff or they're looking at clothing. Like whenever I go to Costco with your mom, and I'm not knocking her. We Well, this is before COVID. Nowadays, she goes in and gets what she needs and gets the hell out. Absolutely. But there was kind of a, let's go look at this. Let's look at that. And let's look at this. And it yeah. was never. What's on sale? What's on this? When I was yeah. going with her, I knew that's what we were doing. Yeah. When I went, get in, get the bolt, get to the cash register, and get the hell home. There was none of this I need to meander. I never did it on my own. It wasn't, when I went shopping, I went to acquire. Yep. Yep. And I feel that's that was built in during this Mrs. Consumer because marketing ads okay. are propelled. Oh, I feel what you're laying down. Towards emails. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Ads are propelled towards females. It's It's really proven this mrs consumer that came up during world war ii and world war one when the men are away at war or the men are away at work the and the women stay home uh these local grocery stores started marketing towards women hey i I've just got this had a on thought, sale hayden that shattered everything i just said yeah when it's something i'm interested in like snow blowers or chainsaws or something like that. <laughs> Which is a total social norm there in itself. Whatever. Yeah. When it is something I'm interested in, and if I walk into the store and they've got a display of snowblowers and let's say it's October. Yep. And I'm thinking about the storms on their way and there's the display. And you got all these different choices and they're now I stop from an, going to get the nut and bolt yep. and I start looking at the snowblowers. Oh really? Oh really. <laughs> And see, that's it's just the marketing. Yep, and there's marketing. been more marketing towards females because of this Mrs. Consumer movement, right? In World War Two, and that's just it's just that that's what I was pointing at. Yes, you see that today, and that's how you feel today. But maybe this is a historical thing, saying we've always been marketing towards women because of this movement back then in the 1930s and 40s. Um, that's why women maybe have been more t have a tendency more to s 
stick around and look at these new ads, look at these sales, clothes, et cetera, et cetera, just because they've been doing that for almost a hundred years now. Could be. Yeah. So that that's just a little on my Ames course, the Mrs. Consumer, because that it just it's important to understand that women are geared towards shopping more. Even today, I, I feel. Yeah, but I think we just proved that wrong with we, our for a real well, moment. I got that, but um, with these marketing ads, it's historically they have been, I feel. Anyway. I think you're, I think historically they have been only because of historically there was a longer period where the woman would stay at home and not a longer period where the man would stay at home. Now, if we had experienced a longer period where men were the homemakers and women were the breadwinners, I think that that'd probably be reversed because I think the, yes, the corporations would have marketed to men. And, and here's where I go into corporate America, corporations of grocery stores, because during this World War II um, and this Mrs. Consumer movement and these marketing ads, corporations were founded. Because they when were they founded? Because that's a question this I have. When they were founded? Well, let's just do a general when, search. When? Yeah, the the origin out. of Walmart. Well, that's late. I want to know when. No, this corporations. Is the group of people got together. Well, corporations were founded way back in the industrial age when you had steel corporations and these big industrial things. Grocery corporations were Later, founded yes. in the 1950s. Right. Uh, late 1940s and 1960s. Origin of Walmart, it began in 1950 with business Sam, business, businessman Sam Walton purchased a store. And here's where Walmart, the giant corporation, started. This early 1950s when this marketing campaign skyrocketed. So Walmart was one of the original corporate one of the original stores? corporate grocery stores same done. with king supers 1947 colorado where we are today that's where it started and was later bought by kroger so regional actually because when i think of regions that i've lived in there's been other stater brothers yeah albertson's albertson's exactly. was up there in the northwest and, and these stater started brothers in the southwest late 40s 50s and 60s is when corporate grocery King stores. King Supers or Kroger's was here in the Midwest. Yep. So a regional thing. It's a regional thing. And now as you progress through the 60s, yep. through the 70s, yep. they're now spreading out yep. throughout the entire Obviously. United States. And even today, they're worldwide. Yep. And that's where the corporate, when we're going to rip corporate, corporate America, we rip them. That's where corporate starts. After this marketing towards Mrs. Consumer, these local grocery stores are booming better than before. You're able, because of opportunity basis, because it's the right time, right place, right time, you're able to start a chain of stores. And then that chain keeps growing because it's still booming. And now you're able to offer lower prices and more selection. So we went from the street market. Yep. To the corporate market, yep. what? And you say that it was a marketing to women in the fifties, yep. forties, in the forties and thirties. In this the 40s marketing and 30s, campaign, it, spurred this giant consumer movement as women would go. But buy. how did they market themselves? I don't. Marketing well, is advertising, right? Yes. And advertising in the twenties and thirties had to be localized because you were. It was localized, and but every single town was doing it. Every single city, every single town, every single freaking county was doing it to but where... But they weren't doing it to Sam Walmart. They were doing it to Joe and the, Frank. The, exactly. And they were doing it to their local stores. Right. They, but instead of the women going out to just get the necessity, this need of, I need this to put Milk dinner and bread. On, yep. on tonight, they were now... Had, we now had a little more money, right? Because the progressive era, they were now buying luxury items and quotes. So this would be after World War II. No, this this is during, and yes, 30s and 40s. This is during this time is when it happened. The 30s was the Depression. People didn't have money. No, not... I'm saying this is evolving during the 30s, right? During the 40s is when it picked up. Okay. But it's evolving. So now people are buying for pleasure. Gotcha. Right? The, these marketing campaigns, these markets, were not just saying, come 
pick up your bread and eggs and stuff like that. It's saying, look at this fancy new sweatshirt that we have for sale or right. something like that. And because of this, corporate America was able to start because of the marketing boost. Because so many people, mostly women, were coming to buy stuff. You could now um, buy a store, get really wealthy off that store, buy another store, get really wealthy off that one. And now because you have so many stores, right, you're able to offer lower prices because you have a, uh, a set person or people giving you the products to sell. How did the supply chain ch allow people to do that? Because it started out, you mentioned, as a connection deal. I know the guy with the tomatoes. Well, now, how do, you, how do you expand into other markets if you don't have the connections in those markets? How did that happen? Because the, the opportunity base, you did have the connections at first. Right. But now you're starting to buy out when your store is doing so well. It's all about capitalism. Now I'm going to buy out this next door and his person that was chaining him comes to me now. Oh, and right. it all and then those those producers right. start to buy themselves out as you know, I'm a bigger producer towards right. this store than you are. I'll buy you all your fields um, for this set amount of money and it looked like a great deal back then. That doesn't seem sustainable. It doesn't, but it was. Somehow it was. Somehow we still have oil um oil field stuff today that's still making billions. Somehow the steel industry is still doing great. Somehow these corporate America grocery stores are doing great. It's just capitalism. Yeah, it's And chill. it's all that opportunity based because it'd be really hard to do something like that with those certain, uh, those certain things today. It'd be really hard to start from scratch, right? Yep and build something up corporate today in those sections. It was all opportunity based. Well, unless you've got something new, you have to have a new exactly. product or a new, new marijuana. You know, but, well, there's a new one. Yep. There's, there's one that these corporate chains are already starting. They're not corporate yet. No, but there are franchises there's here franchises. in Colorado. Yep. I've seen, Which, it used to be just, you'd see advertisements for this store, that store, this, now there's, well, I guess we're gonna mention Starbuds. Yep. They're, they're popping up all over the place. Exactly. And it's all opportunity based. Just because one state made it legal, then all these others are. And if you can get enough money right now in this opportunity base, you'll have enough money to expand right now and then rake in the dough later after your expansions we are done. We should have opened a pot store. <laughs> that's... That's a different thing. I'm just, that's a good example for I'm, today. I'm, not, I'm just saying the that's same a money type maker. of stuff, just right? Throw money on the pot. Well, the, the pot is, that's a good example for today, especially our location. Right. That shows. Well, that's what how it takes. I think it's, it's yeah. a good example, but that's what you're saying it takes. It takes yeah. a new opportunity stream in order for any of this to work. Otherwise, you're stuck in the status quo, which is what we have now. Yeah. We've got Walmart, you know, Croker, excuse me, Stater Brothers, Vaughn's. Uh, all the Piggly Wigglies, everybody that's out there, they're there, and you're not going to compete with them. Exactly. But that was, I like that example. That was a really good example. That's an oh, really fact, really, because that's an example of what's how that same thing that happened 50 years ago is happening again today just with a different opportunity. Yep. Probably still opportunity left in that. I mean, there's a little bit left. So... Now you have these corporate businesses. They can offer lower prices, drive local stores out of business, and have a giant productitioner supply chain. They have all kinds of farmers giving them uh, their, their products, right? And now they're going to start expanding overseas and making their items cheaper. China. So now they have factories overseas. And that was the whole idea. If these corporate businesses can spend this money to create infrastructure in China, it'll make up for itself in 20 years by how cheap the, the items are made there. And not necessarily Walmart's doing it, just what the, where they're buying from that, that product titianer. That's a yeah, different company. Yeah, product titianers in China, I know. What they're buying for, it's a lot cheaper now. Yep. So this is where corporate America becomes corrupt because there's corporate dominance. You're running out these local stores out of business because they've got better supply chains behind them and they've got lower prices, which is good for consumer, but bad for 
the businessman. So, this is this is mostly during. I don't know if it's good for the consumer because ultimately you move into the future and you yep. get those monopolies built up. Exactly, it's not. It's good for the consumer in that in that certain little, small time little period. time yeah. frame. Of but how, once yep, once, once you have control, you have control of prices. Once you don't yep. have con competition, you can charge whatever the hell you want. Yep. So that's where we are today, basically. You, through the seventies and eighties, I didn't really mention them because nothing big change just the corporate america started expanding and going overseas like i mentioned but nothing big to where we are today changed there is one thing that really big changed recently that we will talk about in episode two that i think this it's a start we haven't seen where it's gone yet very much but it's a start that i'd put a red flag on and we're going to definitely talk about that what? in episode two. Oh, you're, not, you're, gonna, you're just going to tease us? No, it's just, just tell a little teaser. <laughs> yes, there's... No, because... Come there, on, I want to talk about it! Yeah, I know. <laughs> we will in episode two. All right. But that here's where we are today. Yep. What do you think? What We need solution to this. Like, yes, this is bad. It's good for the consumer right now. We've got low prices because there's still competition. But what would you prefer? A local store? A bunch of local stores or these corporate? Like, where do you draw the line? I chose the local store. It was a, I should say local. It was a small franchise supermarket in a small town where I lived. When I moved away from the big city to live in a small town in the Pacific Northwest, I had the choice of driving maybe 10 minutes. Let's see, how far away was that place? Winco was probably 10 minutes. Well, after they put the new road in, it was definitely 10 minutes. Might have been 15 with the old road. Anyways, I had the choice to drive 10 minutes down the road uh, to the big store or in the big town or in shop at the little local grocery store in my small town. I shopped at the local store. Everybody knew my name. I knew their name. All my needs were met anytime I needed something. I wanted special beer from one of the local breweries. He said, hey, could you get... Uh, some Table Rock in here. And, and they're like, sure, what do you want? The guy brought in Table Rock. I don't know if I wasn't the only one buying it, but it wasn't there before I requested it and it showed up. Um, most definitely prefer the smaller stores. I just like to have, that's the way I am with everything though. I like to go into the bank and talk to the tellers. I just, that's, I don't well, know, that's is that old fashioned? That's a social, that just goes to human nature. There's social, there's a social animal. It's more of a, Unrobotic, unstructuralized. Well, system. having the choice between big and small, I went to small. And Might have paid a little bit more, but whatever. Well, I was single, didn't have. Do a lot you of think that was only because it was closer, or? No, I told you I could have drove ten minutes. But but you said it was directly in your town, and so it was. It was could, like two minutes away. Exactly. As to, I definitely saved money, or could have saved money on my purchases at Winco. Period. They were cheaper. Um, Paul's prices were a little bit higher. You know, ten cents, twenty-five cents per item higher. Um, but like I said, I was in a position then that I'm not in now. I was single. Now having to watch every dime, you know, it's a matter of. And I remember. I'll tell you what. Here's a funny thing. I remember saying because my parents had a ma and pop business that I wasn't going to shop at Walmart ever. When Walmart expanded out, I'm like, I'm never going to Walmart. They're bad, they're horrible. And then my cousins, we were on a trip and I needed sandals because mine broke. They said, just pop into Walmart. You know, I think we were in Missoula, Montana at the time. They're just go to the Walmart. And I'm like, no, I don't go to Walmart. And they're all like, yeah, Walmart's great. The prices are cheap. You won't believe it. And then and then I'm like, yeah, but they're putting mom and pop stores out of business, blah, 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 I just go in. Well, guess what? took a piece of the drug and went into Walmart and then I was hooked because instead of paying 25 bucks for sandals, I paid 250. Yep. And I was, oh my God. Yep. And that's, but see, you love those, those low prices. How, what uh, is the, the solution? Thing. What is the solution? I, <sighs> I can't figure it out in my head. The only way I can figure it out is you have several chains that compete with each other, keep those low prices, but that runs all mom and pop stores out of business. If they want to work in a grocery store, they're going to be doing minimum wage in one of these big corporate. Yes. 
you know. I don't know. Like I said, it's it's seems... just hard because we progressed so far, far fast the so far past the point that it's like you can't even stop it. There's not even a feasible, you know, mindset to where if you were back in the 50s and 60s, you could say, hey, keep your franchise in that region, right? It's definitely, but, yes, you could. But now it's definitely it's, rolling away from us. It's, it's already rolling away from us, I think, because they're all over the world. They're all over this nation. They're, they're everywhere. You can't stop them anymore. You can't just say, hey, if you keep it in this region, you know, the population will grow here, and um, you can keep mom and pop stores in business. You can't place those laws anymore because they've. The, it's not just Walmart. It's well, every single corporate. That tease that you were talking about, that yeah. next episode, is that corporations we're going to talk about? Because yes, you're asking questions. I feel like I'm going to start talking about the wrong thing. So well, it's just. But, I don't see a solution to the corporate problem. What I say, I don't see a solution to keeping those companies from having a monopoly you could place laws to say they have to that they have to stay exactly the same right now today but how you can't try to like any that way. here's the thing yeah we with the whole banking and the financial meltdown and all that i i really wish they just let the damn banks fail i don't like the idea of passing laws on the free market yeah if they let the banks fail then those sons of bitches would have been out of a job those pricks that caused the financial breakdown would have learned, hopefully, a lesson. And instead, they didn't get the opportunity to learn that lesson and you're because saying this we with, helped them out. You're saying this with banks and grocery stores? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, where is the grocery store thing? Where is it going? I can tell you, I see a lot of things that are happening in stores nowadays that I don't like yep. that didn't happen before. Um well, I don't know. Which it, we're going to be getting into on episode two of this mini series. Okay, well, maybe it's time to stop episode yeah, one. It's just, I was trying to wrap it up. I, I just can't. Um, but I would like to, to share this with you. Uh, we have an interview um, with, okay. with someone who worked in a local grocery store um, in a small town during the 1980s. Okay. Yes, there was corporate America, but in the small town, they were kind of uh, a. They were kind of shunned from it. I mean, a Walmart did end up moving there eventually, but um, we'll have to ask, uh, see if there was a Walmart there when she worked at this local grocery store. So I'm going to insert that here now. Okay, we have an amazing special guest on with us for this interview. This is, do you want to say your name or do you want to be... Anonymous. Anonymous, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> do it. Good say anonymous. Right? Anonymous. Okay. Um, so what should her nickname be? Um, How about mom? Mom. Mom's mom. a good nickname. Mom's a good one, yes. Okay. Hi, mom. Thanks for joining us on Conversation Transfer. Um, we're going to ask you a few questions regarding uh, grocery stores, um, mostly local versus corporate. Um, so here we First, go. First, we'll go with... Uh, We'll do the grocery store stuff first because that'll be episode one, which we talked about. Hayden thought it would be great to have you interviewed because you worked as a kid back in small town America in a grocery store in the 80s. Yes, it was the 80s, right? In the 80s, yeah. In the mm -hmm. 80s. What did you do? I was a caddy. What's, what is the, what's the position of a caddy? I bagged groceries and I took them out to the customers' cars and loaded their cars up and did it all over again. I want to interject now. See, this is, we're going to have to probably start over. You're going to have to edit this out. You see, we, we're talking about uh, stuff, or she's telling us stuff in the past and we already did that future talk. It's almost yeah. like when she says that, it's like, I want to be able to bring up. Look at the services that we've lost. They well, don't do that anymore. What they do at Heritage Market in Eaton, Colorado. They still do it, and he was one back in Sterling. Yeah. They do the same thing okay. when you go in there. You see him tootle it out. I love well, it. Well, this is this is all going to be on you because I might yeah. have things like that that are weird. Yeah. That she no. brings up a good point. I'm going to yeah. want to comment on it. Yeah, we don't have that. Very good. So they no. do in Heritage Market, Eaton, Colorado? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's not something they offer like at Walmart or... The big corporate chains. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So you... Do they at King Supers? I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. I don't know. 
So can you ex explain your experiences in a small town, like working in that, like, what was that like? What'd that feel like? Well, I liked the job a lot. Yeah. Um, I was 16 years old and I did it for a few years or a couple of years. I can't remember exactly, but. Was it a summer job or something you did all year? It went through the school year for a while. Okay. Like maybe junior, senior. I can't remember for sure. Yeah. Was it, were you considered part-time or full-time? Oh, part-time part -time for sure. Yeah. yeah. It was an after school. Actually, yes, I know I did it during school because it'd be like 3.30 to closing, like at 8.30 or whatever. And yeah. And you loved it. I did. And on the weekends, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did like it a lot. Was, was there a specific aspect that you recall was more favored over the other or was it just well there were other kids my age doing the same job oh. so it was kind of social too and plus we were busy and we all worked together well and it was i don't know nice yeah kind of like in our self-checkout one the self-checkouts taking away jobs from my age group the teen the teenagers that typically hold those cashier and bagging positions. Um, so that was your experience in the small town store, mm -hmm. um, which that was not a corporate change, not chain, not a franchise, nothing, right? It was a mom and pop joint. Yeah, so there might have right? been two in. So a partnership, not a large corporation. Yeah, yeah. no, just in that town. Okay. So. Now you moved away for college, right? Yes. Where'd you move to? I moved to Fort Collins. Fort Collins, Colorado. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bigger of a city town setting than where you originally were. Right. So what was the big differences based on grocery shopping between... Well, at this point, I was doing the grocery shopping, not my mom. Yeah. I mean, I didn't work there, though. But so. you obviously went into the grocery store. Sure. Did they have caddies in Fort Collins? It's been so long, I can't even remember. Right. I don't know. And, you know, since it was me, I was doing my shopping, I could carry my own stuff. So, so was I doubt it. So was there a big difference that you could tell, like, between small town shopping and this bigger setting? shopping well the big difference for me because as you know i was a teenager so i <laughs> went from you know being the kid and being taken care of and my yeah. mom doing the shopping now i was the adult and doing the shopping that was the big change. that was a big difference but so like and plus setting, yes like, it was different you know i didn't instead of the mom and pa it was king supers yeah so store setting is different because like mom yeah. and pa everybody knows everybody right yeah, mostly. Mostly, yeah. And now you're in these giant corporate store. This is the giant franchise. And you're there, and are you talking to anyone? I mean, no. In no. fact, I went like at nine at night, so there wouldn't be a lot of people, and you just were trying to get in and get out. And... Okay. Yeah. Well, stay tuned for next week as we take the modern consumer one step further and shine a light on some of corporate greed. It uh, has been quite fun doing this little mini-series. Thank you yep. for listening. This is episode one of the mini-series, yep. uh, and it's Conversation Transfer. Of course, you know, if you want to join the conversation, we've got email. It's conversationtransfer at gmail.com. Don't bother trying to Facebook us. Don't bother trying to Instagram us. You can piss off Twitter. We're on email. If you like this episode, you can try more on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, or on Spreaker. Stay safe, keep thinking, and especially keep talking.